my name is Adam Hanlon and I'd like to welcome you to WebPixel Live. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's episode, which is CCAM, uh, manufacturers of a fine range of housing and accessories um, from Austria. Um, so thank you very much for their support. I'd like to introduce you to our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Nice to see you. I, I have to mention it. I'm sorry, Alex, but it's Alex's birthday today, so I think we should all give him a round of applause. Yay! Thank you very much. Happy yeah, birthday, very, Alex. Very, very special day. Out later, painting the town red, <laughs> celebrating with hundreds of friends. Yeah, oh. Another day at home like every other. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But anyway, happy all birthday. Right, right. Uh, uh, well, I'm not going to let you get away with that without mentioning it was your birthday the day before yesterday. It so was. happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. We're, we're both a step closer to our getting our vaccines. There we go. <laughs> there we are. A couple of days, couple of days closer. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so um, on that happy thought, Alex, um, um, I thought there's been quite a lot of confusion or maybe quite a lot of comments on threads on, on the WebPixel forum about um, lens focal lengths and how they fit into the various categories that we have in underwater photography. So wide angle macro, wide angle close up, super macro, so on and so forth. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for Alex and I to have a discussion about um, what these various categories mean and how they apply to different camera systems. So to start off right at the beginning, I was going to ask Alex, well, I'm going to ask Alex, um, what is the definition of macro? What 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 is macro image? What what's that all about then? Well, thanks for that because that's not a simple question. Well, I, I think the word macro actually means big, which is not what we mean. It to me at all. No, no. So that's probably a good, that's a good point. Yeah. Of how much? Um, but the reason it's important to understand as an underwater photographer is it's a word we use all the time. Yep. You know. Dive sites are divided up into either wide angle or macro dives. Yeah. Photographic competitions have major categories: wide angle, macro. Yep. So you know, and and so on and so so forth. You know, and I do think that underwater photography does, in terms of lens choice, sort of cleave down the middle into these two camps: it's either wide angle or it's macro, and we kind of have a very binary view of those choices. Mm. But both wide angle and macro actually cover, in in common parlance amongst underwater photographers actually cover quite big categories of underwater photography yeah. and I, I think that macro is commonly used by underwater photographers to mean anything from kind of a, a close-up image through kind of a classic macro image all the way down into super macro is often called macro by underwater photographers talking to each other. Yeah. Underwater photographers will also subdivide macro into close-up pictures, macro pictures and super macro pictures. And most people in their heads have some sort of dividing line between those three categories. But there are no strict definitions out there. They all get redefined by different people all the time. Yep. The one that I use in my teaching, um, making the point that, you know, I don't believe there are strict definitions on these, but just for people to help get their heads around things in terms of being able to talk to other underwater photographers. I always say close up pictures start with a picture area about the size of a magazine sort of magazine size and down. So if your subject in real life is about that sort of size and that's what you're shooting, that's a close-up picture. When you get to postcard size, mm. that's kind of macro. Mm. And that goes all the way down to subjects that are about the size of a, an, in, in real life, or about the size of an old piece of, of old slide. And that's where macro becomes super macro. But you can refer to all those pictures as macro because lots of people do. But that's kind of where I like to draw draw the lines. So, so I think I think a couple of points I'm going to tease out from the first point is that the, the images are not defined by what lens you use to shoot them with. Typically, they are shot with certain types of lenses, but there's no reason why you can't shoot a close up picture with a macro lens. Um, and in actual yeah. fact, there's no there's no reason, in honestly, why you couldn't shoot a macro picture with a wide angle lens. All of these things are possible um, because because it's about the size of the subject that you're shooting, um, and um, so I, I really like that idea. So, so super macro, Alex, you're going to define as being smaller than a piece of uh, than the, the image area of a 35 mil slide. Yes, and I, I think I mean I, I think there's two ways you can kind of draw that line. Yeah. And I think photographers are attracted to super macro because they make it, it makes you sound like you're a superhero, and you know <laughs> everyone knows super macro must be better than normal macro. And you need of more course, toys. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's keen to. Um, to, to talk about super macro. Um, for some people, it's the moment you put an additional accessory on a macro lens, mm. you're doing super macro. Mm. However, I do see time and again, 
people flipping down their, their close-up lenses and then taking pictures that they could have taken without flipping it down yep. and saying, oh, yeah, I did a great super macro dive yep. photographing things this big, you know, and it's kind of like, yep. yeah, well, it's not really super macro just because you flipped a lens down. Yep. So for me, I think having that sort of, you know, something that would fit, you know, your picture is that size or smaller in real life yep. uh, is, is, a, is a better definition, which means... If you have a, a smaller sensor camera, like a Micro Four Thirds or a, a, a crop sensor SLR, you can shoot into super macro without using any accessories. If you run your one-to-one -one macro lens all the way to minimum focus, for me, you're getting into the realms of super macro because yep. ultimately you're taking a picture with the same picture area as someone maybe with a full frame camera who's using a super macro accessory. Yep. So I think that's a, a much better gate. All that said, as I said at the beginning, I'm not that keen on trying to define these things. I think the important thing as a photographer is to be thinking about the image. Yep. And it's not whether you're doing super macro, whether you're doing macro, whether you're doing close up. Yep. Um, I think it's actually, it's always about the photograph. Yep. And you can photograph very tiny subjects in a much bigger frame and make an incredible picture. And you can shoot, you know, super high magnification and shoot a load of junk. Yep. So, you know, it's, I would rather people focused on the images and the photography and not get too caught up in the definition. But I realize there are times when we need to have those discussions about definitions. And that's why it's worth talking about these things. So, so with that in mind and going with the definition for a minute, obviously, you've got the, the classic definition of wide angle is, is um, the equivalent field of view of 35 mil lens on a full frame camera on a film camera originally. So, so, um, so and anything that's that or wider, that field of view is considered a um, a wide angle image and um, we don't really have a super wide angle i suppose will we define um i think uh, you have to say ultra wide angle ultra wide angle yeah you do on yeah a, on a wet pixel live yes absolutely yeah um and um and, and i mean at that point really we move into normal fisheye don't we now i mean I, I guess the difference really here now comes in that we have rectilinear versus fisheye so Another question to you yeah, then, Alex. So I'll stop you um, going too far on this. And I think the first thing to say is that I would say, you know, that 35 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, that might be considered wide angle by a photographer on land. Yeah. In underwater photography, that's pretty much what we call mid range. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you really get into what could be really called wide angle underwater until you get to about a 20 mil lens on full frame which is a 90 degree field of view, corner to corner type picture, which I think is really where, for me, wide angle comes in underwater. Because yep. underwater photography is so biased towards extreme wide angle images. Yep. And therefore there's no point you know, trying to claim anything else is, is really wide angle underwater. So I think our wide angle come, kicks in a little bit wider than traditional wide angle on land, because so much underwater photography is done with extreme wide angle. Yeah. The other, big area of confusion in wide angle photography underwater is that we have three types of lenses, even within one format of camera that does wide angle. Yeah. And that means that focal lengths, um, although we used to focal lengths being proportional to how wide an angle a lens sees, we have three different types of lenses um, in any one given camera format. And then we have at least three camera formats that are in very common use. Yep. So there's a lot of room for confusion. Yep. So the three camera formats, obviously full frame cameras, crop sensor cameras, and micro four thirds cameras. And if you put a, a 10 mil lens on each of those, it will be a very different, different angle yeah. of coverage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there is that confusion there. And therefore I'm a strong believer that it's actually much more helpful to speak about wide angle lenses for underwater photography in terms of field of view, yeah. because I think that at least gets everyone talking in the same currency. Yeah. Now, I know that there are issues in field of view because fisheye lenses have a wider diagonal field of view than sort of a rectilinear lens, and a rectilinear lens has a wider horizontal, horizontal field yeah. of view than a, or a top to bottom field of view than a fisheye lens, you know, so equivalent. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, confusing, and, and also the change of camera formats also affect that because a squarer picture yep. has less corner to corner field of view so but it has the bottom field of aspect view. ratios are important where are micro four, yeah. yeah aspect ratio five micro four thirds. however i think field of view the differences are much smaller mm. and i think it makes most sense to talk about the diagonal which is the maximum 
field of view that these lenses can can produce. I think that gets everything in the same yeah. um, the same currency. Yeah. Because the problem with with all the systems now is we have three types of wide angle lenses that are in very common use on any one system. Might have to put the right number of fingers up. And those three are fisheye lenses, yeah. rectilinear wide angle lenses, which are normal wide angle lenses without fisheye distortion. Yeah. And then the wet lenses that we use, the water contact lenses which for SLR shooters and, and, and mirrorless shooters, the serious mirrorless shooters, these are likely to be things like the Nauticam WACP or WWL lenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously they are linked to a, a lens on the camera that has a, a much shorter focal length, but actually as a lens system has a very wide field of view. So just to explain a few of those numbers to help people understand, a normal fisheye lens on most systems sees about 180 degrees corner to corner. So it's a very wide lens. Sure. And on a prop sensor SLR, that, well, I'm gonna do it on a full frame camera because it's probably simpler. That would be a 15 or a 16 mil lens. Yep. Now, a 16 mil Nikon fisheye sees 180 degrees corner to corner, if I'm pointing the right directions. Um, whereas a 16 mil rectilinear wide angle lens sees only 110 or 114 degrees, I think it is, yep. um, corner to corner. So no. they're both the same focal length, but the field of view is massively different. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where part of the confusion comes in. Yep. And then you add to that mix the fact that you've got a you put a 28 mil lens on your camera, put it behind a WACP1, and that sees 130 degrees. Yeah, yeah. So you've got this situation where you've got a 16 mil seeing massively wider than another 16 mil. And then a 28 mil that sees wider well, than one of the 16, <laughs> but not the other. And that's why. It, this, the focal lengths are causing so much confusion these days. Whereas if we just mentioned the, fo the, the, the number of the lens, because that's how we identify them, and then say straight away, 180 degree fisheye. Yep. Uh, I took this with 114 degree, 16 to 35. Yep. I took this with 130 degree, um, 28 mil behind WACP. Yeah, WACP. I think that yeah. would make it a lot easier for people to understand what you're talking about and how wide your lens is seeing. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think the focal length is actually very misleading because we've we've basically got these three different currencies yep. where you're saying, yeah, I'm going to give you 100, but I'm not going to tell you what currency. Yeah, yeah. And you don't really know what you're getting. Yeah. Whereas if you talk in field of view, it's like saying, right, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give you this much in gold bullion or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. And, and, and everyone's currency is, is related to Somebody that. Somebody else's so, a gold, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think field of view is, it's, it's is a much more... It's our birthday, so answers of gold is good. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a, that's a good point. Out, so comparing light with light is very important. I think I think the other thing that we should obviously briefly mention as well is that that obviously the actual the way the image appears varies between those three lens types that you've mentioned. Obviously, fisheye with a great deal of barrel distortion um, throughout the image, um, but particularly in the center. Rectilinear with minimum center distortion, or the, and well, ideally, ideally minimum distortion, but typically if the distortion occurs, it normally occurs towards the edges. Um, and then the WACP, and, and again, we discussed this in previous episodes, but WACP1, where you've got a little bit of barrel distortion, but the corners are pretty good um, and then WCP2 where you've got almost no distortion so so um, and then WWL and, and and you know in on lens will all fit in and, and, and other accessory lens will all fit in somewhere around that parabola so so you've got not only have you got a variety of focal lengths you've also got a variety of optical effects that the lens produce um, and and so it, it, this is really important when you're comparing these you you need to compare not just how much it sees, but also the effect of the image that you're going to get at the end of it. Um, I think it's quite important as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that was that was quite a whistle stop tour through 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 um, lens or, or through image types, Alex. And um, obviously, a really good place to see the effects of these would be on social media or on websites. So, Alex, we can see those types of image at, on your website at um, amustard.com is my website. Um, it's a, I haven't updated it for a little bit. I've been snowed under this year, so I've not. Po I'm, I'm gonna have to apologise. Saying um, it's already February, I've not posted a picture on social media, and I've also my website not been updated for a while. But um, I'll, I'm on the case. Just it's busy, busy time here. At the, um, and the calling. the um, and the um, obviously on Alex website you can search by focal length, but when you do it, put two digits in. So if you're looking for images taken with a 20 mil, put two zero in. Um, for example, no, it's supposed to actually put two zero point zero point zero. If you go. put 20 in, it will pull up images on 20. my website that were taken 
with a 20 mil lens, but it will also pull up images that are taken at 8 p.m. and on the 20th of the month um, and that sort of thing. Whereas if you put 20.0, none of those other 20s are ever written 20.0, whereas for whatever reason, the Nikon lenses always get reported Excess, yeah. as 20.0 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it helps pick them up. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Um, and we'll see you again soon. Have Enjoy the rest of your birthday. Um, and I'd like to thank um, CCAM again very much for sponsoring this episode. Um, much appreciate the support. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, please feel free to add comments in the comment section about your experiences with lenses and the various different types. And also to drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.